In this activity, your students will use homemade Play-Doh to practice making models of various atoms of elements on the periodic table. The first thing you'll need to do is prepare a batch of homemade Play-Doh. On page 39 in your teacher's guide, you'll find a recipe for homemade Play-Doh. The ingredients are simple. It takes white flour, salt, some vegetable oil, cream of tartar, which is found in the spice section at your grocery store, and then some food coloring to color the Play-Doh. The recipe is made on the stove top. You can do this ahead of time or you can use this as a lab and have your students make it along with you. The Play-Doh when complete resembles this Play-Doh right here. It's, it's just a ball and what you'll want to do is divide it into uh, three parts and then using the food coloring color it in three different colors. We have some examples here. We've made a yellow ball and then we have some green Play-Doh and then we've got some red and the more you work the food coloring in the more consistent the colors will be. Uh, to begin the the activity here uh, you'll refer, refer your students to their periodic table and then review the idea that the atomic number the atomic number is the whole number found in each square uh, for each element on the periodic table. Now you've already uh, presented the idea that atoms are uh, composed of neutrons and protons and electrons and now the idea is to let your students know that the atomic number tells the number of each of those subatomic particles found in an atom of that element. For example, the element carbon has the atomic number six which means it will have six protons, six electrons, and usually six neutrons. Now we say usually six neutrons because the number of neutrons in any of these uh, atoms of these elements may vary up and down slightly. But for sure the number of protons and the number of electrons is equal to the atomic number. In the case of carbon it's six. Another example magnesium. The atomic number is 12. So it has 12 protons, 12 electrons, and usually 12 neutrons. Sorry, 12 protons, 12 electrons, and usually 12 neutrons. So as an example with your students, uh, each, each student or each group of students will have uh, Play-Doh in three different colors and you'll start with the carbon as the example. Atomic number is six and so you'll take uh, and have them form six little balls representing the six protons in an atom of carbon. The green we'll say is, is our neutrons and so because the atomic number is six we'll go ahead and have six little balls, have them prepare six little balls representing the six uh, neutrons in an atom of carbon and we said the red's going to represent our electrons uh, and so we'll have to have six uh, little electrons. Okay, now it's the, the protons and the neutrons are found in the nucleus of an atom so we'll have your students take those, we'll move these aside and we'll cluster those into to form the nucleus of, of our atom here and these want to roll around here quite a bit so there's our uh, protons and neutrons forming the nucleus of the atom and then the electrons encircle like the planets circling around the sun in orbit so we'll take our electrons here and we'll just put them out a distance away showing that uh, they are traveling about the nucleus uh, of the atom of carbon. So uh, to review uh, we said the atomic number tells us the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons found in atoms and we've used the three different colors of our Play-Doh to re uh, represent each of those subatomic particles. Uh, once your students have the carbon model make uh, made, uh, refer them back to their periodic table and, and choose another element. For example, let's say we chose something like beryllium. So they'd find beryllium on their chart. Its atomic number is four and so we take four of each. So 
we can go ahead and we'll just take out two of the yellows, two of the greens, and take away two of the electrons. And then what's left here is our uh, model of beryllium. Now a game that you can play along with this activity is to uh, have each student uh, prepare uh, a model of their birthday element and this will go along with the later uh, activity we'll do. Uh, so uh, each student on the chart finds the element which corresponds to their date of their birthday. Now um, for example let's say uh, your birthday is say May 10th so we'll find the 10th atom here the atomic number of 10 which is neon and so uh, your students then will uh, prepare enough uh, of the subatomic particles of each, so they'll have 10 yellows, uh, 10 greens, and then 10 red electrons and make their uh, birthday uh, atom from that. Uh, a, a, an extension to this is a game that's a lot of fun uh, which has students practicing this atomic number uh, concept again and again. It works like this. Um, we'll set these, uh, use these uh, little board here to represent tables and so we'll have two tables set up and then we'll get some students here let's, let's play two teams of students here so we'll have uh, uh, in, in this game uh, these two students are on one team and their opponents are these two students here and we'll have you the teacher here stand front okay and then each student uh, we'll use these milk caps to represent a, a plate or a platter or tray of some sort on which the students will prepare their models. And uh, what you'll do is, as the teacher here, you'll call out the name of an element. And uh, the students uh, can have access to a periodic table. And say, for example, if you did call out, say, nitrogen. Nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen, if you refer to your table, is atomic number seven. Okay, uh, let's see, I think we're going to need one more uh, table here, and we'll get one more set of students out here. Okay, uh, at each table, now, uh, these students back here will have the piece of clay that will represent the protons, and then these guys will have the clay that represents the neutrons, and these guys will have the clay that represents the electrons up here. So when you call out the element name, like we said nitrogen for example, the students will look on their periodic tables and find that nitrogen is number seven, and so these guys at the back table here will pull off seven little balls of Play-Doh and put it on their plate to represent the seven uh, protons and they'll pass their plate forward to their teammate and their teammate will add seven more I believe we said these were the neutrons so they'll pull off seven more little balls and add it to the plate they'll pass that plate forward to the third teammate here and he or she will then add the seven electrons and then get them arranged appropriately on the plate to show uh, the correct model of the atom in this case was nitrogen and then the first team that gets their plate all the way move forward with the correct uh, model uh, wins the round and what we usually play is the, the team that's first gets two points uh, any other team that comes in second place or third place if it's correct uh, can earn one point now if one part of the model is incorrect let's say that uh, Sally here uh, accidentally put uh, only six, uh, uh, let's say these were the neutrons, uh, she put, let's say, only five. She only put five neutrons on there, which is technically not correct. And you, you discover that when the plate came forward. Uh, the plate will have to be passed back to Sally in order to correct uh, the mistake and then pass forward again. So in some cases, uh, the students may be passing the plate back and forth uh, to fix problems uh, that they have found with another player's work. This game can be lots of fun and you can practice this concept of atomic number many many times and it's, uh, it gives students that uh, tactile experience and the concept of the atomic number will be well ingrained in their minds.